performance art, blurring the lines between participant and spectator, between spectator and spectacle since the 20th century. Its term became widely used in the 1970s as an untraditional way of making art. Performance artists like Otubang Nkanga, Marina Bromovic, Adrian Piper, and Nick Cave challenge the binary roles of our society while highlighting our precarious nature. The notion of an author dies in its act, an act that is an experimental trust fall on the fabric that makes us human in a public sphere. It aims to give agency back to its participants and to ask questions unanswered when we are merely spectators. In this episode, we will delve into the nature of performance art through the lens of post-structuralist thinkers like Roland Barthes, Frederick Nietzsche, and Judith Butler. With their help, we will abolish the notion of an author in my own performance art and pass the mic back to the public. I'm Salima Benarhuma. My name is Gianpaolo Cavazzuti. My name is Roberto Homora. I'm Ricardo Bagliara. I'm Zoe Elizabeth Ogle. I'm a visual artist and a painter. I'm majoring in art history. And this is their take on my performance art. Be My Eyes, Be My Hands is an interactive installation that relies on public participation to create a limited two-dimensional painting. It was first conducted on December 21st, 2021 in Cesena, Italy, during the restrictions and regulations of the COVID-19 pandemic, and a second time in Giardino di Via San Carlo Felice in Rome on September 30th, 2023. It's interesting to think about it in terms of like the pandemic as well. So you mentioned that the um, the stick is exactly a meter long, which was like the policy at the time to for social distancing. And some people would very much um, obey that and others would not. So, and I feel like that was kind of also, I feel like that was a topic of conversation throughout a lot of the pandemic. Are, are people, um, to what degree are people following these uh, policies? It was the moment in which people had to reunite but unite uh, really in a physical way. But it's funny people comply to the rules then. At the center of the performance is the artist. Blindfolded and brushes in hand, the audience is encouraged to manipulate her arms through the crutches attached to her body. The result of up to two hours of standing idle is an amalgamation of collective work marked by hasty strokes, splatters and dots, something similar to a child's exploration of paint. Like the thing is that it's been made from a lot of people through you, which is like amazing to look at. But at the same time, it has that familiar feel of something on the fringe. In the first chapter of this video, I will discuss the precarious aspect of this performance. And while I will now share my intention behind the work, the second chapter will explore the importance of removing the artist or author to autonomously interpret a piece. Chapter one, the fluidity of creativity. Performance is unique because of its ephemeral nature. Time and space dictate its outcome, just as time and space dictate our own state. It reminded me of how like, we're controlled by the media and like we choose to blindly follow and obey what's being told to us in news. And <laughs> so it's like, you're switching it around, like you're not being blinded by the media, but you're being blinded by the people around you. And you're like, you're getting yourself to be pushed around by other people instead of being pushed around by the media like we usually are. I know this seems like a given, but in a world saturated with media, it's easy to forget that we are inevitably in debt to the world around us for the person we have become. That every action we take is in some way performative and therefore creative. Is dead. This highlights what scholars refer to as performativity. And while different scholars apply it to various areas of concentration, post-structuralists agree that it is fluid and ever-changing. Friedrich Nietzsche, a 19th century German philosopher, delved into the decentered nature of subjectivity and the existential crisis of the subject, laying the groundwork for a profound reevaluation of the self. This decentered subjectivity, marked by a continuous becoming rather than a static being, has resonances in the realm of performance art and performativity. In performance art, where artists often engage with the fluidity of identity, Nietzsche's ideas find expression as performers embody various roles, challenging the stability of the self, fostering a shared experience that reflects the ongoing process of self-creation and reinvention.
through performance female bodies and black bodies and queer bodies and bodies that bring together multiple identities could be reclaimed, reasserted, and represented through many lenses. Judith Butler, a prominent theorist in gender studies and philosophy, has significantly influenced the discourse on performativity challenging traditional views of identity and subjectivity. For something to be performative means that it produces a series of effects. We act and walk and speak and talk in ways that mm, consolidate an impression of being a man or being a woman. Butler's concept of performativity posits that gender and identity are not inherent, but are constructed through repeated performative acts. The application of Butler's ideas to performance art is particularly pertinent, as the very essence of performativity is embodied in the artistic act. Your role in the performance is kind of like this medium um, between, and I guess like it's kind of, it seems to me almost a comment of like the artist in society in a way, like uh, the artist is like the media, thinking about like the metaverse and like the artist is like kind of a surrogate or just like how how social media kind of identities become like these uh, extensions of of all of us but not like but there's still this kind of removal of um, kind of the real in performance art artists engage in a deliberate often subversive reiteration of identity challenging fixed categories and inviting the audience to question established norms here the body becomes a site for the ongoing construction and deconstruction of identity echoing Butler's assertion that identity is a continuous performance rather than a stable essence. Performance art, as a space for the enactment of performativity, becomes a dynamic arena where the existential crisis of the subject is both explored and transcended. Now there's like a father that is actually like redirecting uh, his child to be more curious about it. Chapter 2. Anti-intentionalism. This may hurt to hear, but intention doesn't matter when meaning is precarious. When performance embodies the spectacle, the subject no longer has authority over its interpretation. According to Roland Barthes, French semiotician and literary critic, this is essential to the interpretation of any text. If I may, if you went back with a empty canvas, I think that would have been still artistic because it would show the, there, there, and definitely in the modern world, there's been a, a death of community and just helping the neighbor or connecting with the neighbor or connecting with the community. At least I would like to say that. In the death of the author, Roland Barthes challenges the authority of the author in interpreting a text, asserting that meaning is shaped by readers rather than fixed by the author's intentions. This anti-authorial stance aligns with the anti-intentionalism found in performance art. In performance art, the artist may intentionally leave aspects open to interpretation and the audience actively contributes to the creation of its meaning. Barth's idea encourages a shift from uncovering the artist's intent to exploring the diverse interpretations generated through the live and interactive experience of performance art reflecting a more democratic and dynamic approach to artistic meaning. From the boundary-breaking pioneers of the 20th century to contemporary creators, performance artists have persistently challenged societal norms and embraced the precarious nature of human existence. With the help of modern thinkers, we can experience, create, and even embody art at any capacity. As in the contemporary world, all is in flux. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Stay creative and I'll see you next time.